All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Course Creator Community Podcast. I am super excited because we have an absolute rock star on the week on the line this week, uh, all the way from New York in America. A little bit about this person. She's a marketer. When it comes to marketing, she knows what she's talking about. She's the host of the popular marketing podcast, the Marketing Junkie Podcast. I recommend everybody check that out. I'll put it in the show notes. She's a Facebook ad expert. We're not going to be uh, speaking about Facebook ads today, but I'll, I'll get her back on the show for that. But if you need a hand on Facebook ads, she's the person that you speak to. Uh, and she's also an expert in membership sites. She's currently running three different membership sites, all different styles, all different things. So she knows a thing or two in, in that space there. So without further ado, let me introduce the one and only Ms. Michelle Caruana. Michelle, how are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for the introduction. Very flattering. <laughs> no, well, with a with a rock star like you, it's easy. Uh, hey, Michelle, I like to start all my podcasts off with a quote or mantra that inspires you or fires you up. Now, I usually ask that before we get online, but uh, I completely forgot to do that today. So I'm just going to throw it out to you cold. Is there a, a quote or mantra that inspires you or fires you up? Sure. And this one might be a little bit bit conventional, but it's something that I certainly live by. And this kind of comes from my brick and mortar business days. Something that I, that I'll probably talk a little bit about later is that everything that I've learned has kind of come out of necessity. I um, almost ran a brick and mortar business into the ground before I turned it around. So one of the quotes that kind of always pops up into my head when I'm talking about business um, is actually from one of my favorite books and it's find out what you're afraid of and go live there. Because when I was running my brick and mortar business, I spent a long time kind of ignoring my numbers, ignoring my conversion rates, ignoring my sales, and I just kind of hid from it. And once I kind of found freedom in exploring more of what, you know, really scared me and what was actually going on when it came to the actual business, that's when it kind of really opened up more opportunities for me. And I really figured out, okay, what was going to turn my business around? What was going to make the biggest difference? How can I actually make this into a profitable venture? And that's once I really started digging into the numbers and figuring out what was working and what wasn't working, I really was able to thrive. And so that's something that I constantly tell my members and constantly tell my students is that you can't hide from what scares you in your business, even though it might seem a little bit less fun um, than, you know, posting on Instagram or sharing a story or something like that. It's something that a lot of business owners miss. And I think that that's one of the biggest difference makers in a successful business owner is not hiding from that scary stuff. Oh, yes. I, I love that. Uh, in two, I think there's two messages there. I think um, confronting this, this scary stuff, I think that's one side of things. The, the way I look at that is I used to be a big scaredy cat, Michelle. I was scared of everything, you know, speaking to in public, you know, posting on social media that used to scare me. And then I can't remember, I was listening to Tony Robbins or, or one of those gurus. And they say, essentially said the same thing. They were like, hey, find something that scares you and do it. You know what? It's not that bad. And then do the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. And if you just do that for a year or two, all of a sudden you start giving zero Fs, you know? And it's just like, hey, you know, I can do that. I can do that. So I think that's cool. And I think the other important thing is um, not only afraid of, but maybe the things you suck at as well. You know, that's what I found where it was like, if there was something that I sucked at, I could try and hide behind it. I could try and, I guess, avoid it or, you know, maybe blame someone else. Be like, ah, yeah, that just happened. It's this person or, or that person or whatever. Um, but if you confront it, you're like, oh, hold on. I'm actually not as good as that as I should be. Then you can actually do something about it. Be like, you know what? I'm not as good, but at least I know it. Now I can do something about it and get better. So I, I love both of those quotes there, Michelle. Um, hey, I've been following you for a while, Michelle, and I've now bought some stuff from, from you as well. Uh, so I know what it is you do. But for everyone listening, do you want to give us, maybe before we dive into the, the membership sites, just give us a little bit of background in, in a couple minutes of what it is you actually do? Sure, absolutely. So I actually, um, I went to school for economics and then I turned into a corporate marketing professional. I absolutely fell in love with marketing. So I kind of got away from the finance world a little bit. Um, and then I left to open that brick and mortar business that I referred to, which happened to be an indoor playground. So depending on where in the world you are listening from in America, in the UK, in a lot of 
uh, similar areas. It's basically you walk in, it's half a coffee shop. So we sold a menu very similar to like a Starbucks or something like that. Um, and then half a recreation facility for kids. So we did classes, we did camps, we did birthday parties um, and all that good stuff. So I left my job. I opened the brick and mortar business. And that's the one that I refer to as being very difficult to get started with. And that was actually really the first place where I realized how much monthly recurring revenue can make a difference in a business because Mm -hmm. I felt like I was constantly fighting for every single dollar in my business. When I was looking at my monthly expenses, and this is one of the kind of number things that I was referring to, but I actually calculated exactly how much money based on our expenses and based on how much profit I wanted to make and what I wanted to take home. I knew exactly how much not only we needed to make every single day, but also every single hour. And I felt like I was constantly scraping together every single sale. I felt like I was constantly promoting on social media. So that's actually the first place that I really started warming up to the idea of a membership because we did have a membership option as soon as we opened, but I never really prioritized it. And I really didn't do a good job of explaining that benefit to my customers. And once I really started hitting my stride and figuring out how to express the benefits to uh, potential members and communicating that and actually making sales, once we had that consistent, reliable monthly recurring revenue in that business, I constantly felt like my back was against the wall. And I'm sure a lot of online entrepreneurs can relate to that as well. You know, feeling like if you're not posting or if you're not launching or if you're not doing a workshop or something like that, or, you know, being on podcast interviews, something like that, if you're not doing all of those things all the time, you're not making sales. Mm. So once I kind of switched from always being in sales mode to just focusing on retaining my members, serving an even smaller group of people and just keeping them happy, asking them how I can improve their membership experience. Once I had, you know, a hundred or so really happy members, the membership really sold itself. And that's really the only time I realized how valuable monthly recurring revenue could be because it basically paid my expenses for that business. And that's when I said, Hey, I have time to do some really fun stuff with marketing. Now I have some more money so that I can outsource the things that I suck at. Exactly what you said, (laughs) because it's all well and good to, you know, intellectually understand the idea of outsourcing and delegating. But if you don't have the money to do it, or if your business is bleeding money, then you can really never make that a reality. And it just was never able to be a reality for me until I had that consistent recurring revenue that I could count on. That's when I started outsourcing. And that's actually really how I was able to bring that business online. And that kind of evolved into an online course. So once I worked out all the kinks, once I really started to be profitable, we actually opened another location. And then I started creating online courses about how to open a successful indoor playground. And one of the things that I think my students really love about my memberships and my courses and online products and things like that is that I am brutally honest. I think I spend the first couple modules talking about how difficult it is to make money in that business model. Mm -hmm. And I basically take every mistake I made and I help people to avoid it. And I just kind of take everything I learned along the way and package it up with a nice little bow and get people to where I ended up a lot faster. But that's actually how I was able to bring that business online was that that monthly recurring revenue. It freed up my time, it freed up my mental energy, and I was able to say, hey, you know, people are constantly emailing me about how I got to where I am. People are constantly asking me to consult and things like that. That's really how my first online course was born. And then once I started selling that online course is exactly how my membership got created. It was another thing that was kind of created out of need, out of necessity. I found that a lot of my course students, a lot of people who went through my program loved it so much that they wanted that continuous support after the course was over. Mm -hmm. But I just knew that I wouldn't be able to give them enough time or enough energy or enough resources unless I was charging for it. Mm -hmm. So basically my course members for about a year were begging for a way that they could have a community and a way that they could have continual access to me. So I started my first membership. It was a back-end membership, meaning only people who had previously purchased my Play Cafe Academy course were then invited to the membership. And basically the membership took everything they learned in the course and helped them with implementation. So I always tell people that my course gets them from daydream to opening day, 
And then my membership really provides that support for operations and hiring and training and eventually selling a business, which I also did. So it really helps not only with that implementation, but with those ongoing issues that come with owning a brick and mortar business like that. Awesome. I love it. Okay. So that's membership number one. What's your second one, Michelle? So my second membership, I've kind of um, picked this one up and put it back down a couple times, but I finally found the right offer and the right audience. But it's essentially my Marketing Junkie podcast, but a premium community. So basically every single week I release an episode. If you guys have ever listened to my podcast, I get very specific. I dive very deep into the numbers. It's definitely not philosophical. It's very tactical. It's very specific. Um, but basically in my Marketing Junkie membership, I help take all of the details that I discuss and I give them personalized support. So people can join my Marketing Junkie Society and they can ask questions about the whatever I spoke about. They can bring questions that they have about, you know, oh, I tried to implement this particular type of Facebook ad. Can you take a look at it? Can you help me? So it's de- it basically gives my podcast listeners a way to interact with me personally without actually signing on as a one-on-one client. So that is really a coaching focused membership. Previously, it was a little bit more training focused, but I found that people really wanted access to me. They didn't necessarily need more content. They needed implementation help and support. So that's really a more coaching focused membership. Whereas the indoor playground membership, it's also coaching focused, but that one is really thriving on the community aspect. Mm. A lot of the owners want to interact with each other. That's that's one membership where I have to kind of take a step back almost and say, yes, I'm the expert. I'm the person who brought these people together, but there are 147 owners in here and that are very active that also have value and perspective to add. So while that one is also coaching focused, it's very much collaborative and it's definitely more community-based whereas my Marketing Junkie membership is a little bit more coaching. It's a little bit more for beginners. And that is what I would call a front-end membership, meaning that a lot of people will end up being in that membership for several months and then eventually deciding they want a little bit more implementation help, a little bit more personalized support, at which time they have the option to sign on as a one-on-one client with me. Awesome. I love it. Now, I got one number there. So there's about 150 members in the um the playground membership, right? Yes, that is active. So we there's actually a little bit over 200 members, but some people for oh. whatever reason choose not to use the Facebook group. So oh. I just hopped off a coaching call with them actually, and there was 147 people um, in attendance. But for some reason, some people just don't like to use Facebook. Sometimes it's dependent on where they are. But yes, we just reached um, over 200 members. All right. Congratulations. I think 200 members in any membership is a, is a big achievement. So congratulations, Michelle. Thank you. It's a little bit higher price point and it's a little bit higher touch. So um, I was just so thrilled once we got the first 10 and once we got the first 100. And I just feel so thankful that I can actually impact, you know, almost 200 people's lives every single month when I was doing one-on-one coaching and consulting I was really only able to work with six or seven people, six or seven indoor playground owners at a time. So it just feels really good that I'm able to help serve more businesses in this kind of different way of setting up a business. Can I, would, can I ask that price point, Michelle? Is that okay? Yeah, sure. It's $97 a month currently. Okay. Not bad. So what's that? About 20K a month on that membership? Uh, yes, that's correct. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's uh, my course price point is $597. Um, so I actually offer a one month free trial to that membership gotcha. because my course is very, it's very, um, it's very thorough. I will mm-hmm. say there's a lot of modules. There's a lot of content. There's a lot of resources. So I usually allow people to join uh, for that first month, kind of poke around the community Um, see if they like it, see if they benefit from it. And then only then after that first 30 days, they start getting charged. And I also put together a monthly training for them. So even though it's coaching and community-based, I also do a monthly training, but they typically aren't ready to consume that content while they're still consuming the course content. So I know a lot of people are kind of against the free trial, but I think because a lot of people sign up for my membership at the same time they sign up for my course, it just works for me. And honestly, my conversion rate from the course into the membership, I'm really happy with it. And 
people very rarely cancel. I, I very seldom get people canceling. Unfortunately, this year, COVID impacted a lot of small businesses. Yeah. So that did have a small impact, but we seem to be recovering. And I, I've never been more thankful to have a community that not only I can lean on, but others can lean on. This, this year really, really took a toll on the indoor playground industry. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. Well, I, I want to go back as, as well, Michelle. You mentioned the, the free trial. I do think there's a difference between a free trial and a free trial that someone that's already paid you 600 bucks, right? Because exactly. the only people getting the free trial have already paid you 600. So I think for the people listening, um, there's, there's a di- I just want to highlight that difference, you know? So I think that's important yeah. to note. Uh, okay. Now your sort of podcast membership, can, uh, can you share numbers and prices there? Is that okay? Yep. So that one, I actually, I actually started that one first, um, all the way back in 2016, but I don't really count that, (laughs) um, because it it really floundered again. I didn't have the right offer. I really tried to make it more tutorial based. So I actually just relaunched it this past month. There's currently 25 beta members, um, that are testing it out. Um, it's been great. Um, we do a weekly call, a weekly implementation call. I release podcast episodes on Tuesday and then we do calls on Thursday so people can bring questions. And I've actually found that it really has helped my podcast numbers as well um, because people are sharing it. People are getting a lot more value out of my podcast because I, again, I think it is so tactical. I think that people needed that extra support in order to really take that very specific information and run with it. So I, it is a closed door membership, whereas my other one is mm. open. So I'm not going to be relaunching that one until the fall. I kind of want to make sure that I'm able to format my trainings and my coaching calls in a way that gets people results. Um, so that one was recently relaunched. And then I also relaunched or launched a brand new membership, which is a more um, standalone membership, but I'll mention that one in a second. Gotcha. Can I, so the beta members, are they paying at the moment? Yes. What, can I ask the price point on that? Yep. That one is definitely less expensive. It's $27 a month. Gotcha. And that's the beta price or full price? That's the beta price. Um, my goal would be to make it $47 a month in the next launch. Again, I'm just trying to marry the benefit with the with the price. It's a little bit difficult because I do want people to eventually consider a one-on-one coaching spot with me. Um, and I really find that when I first launched that membership back in 2016, I really found value in numbers with Mm. my indoor playground membership. I really like the tight knit community. And I think if I priced it lower, it would water down the, the quality of the membership. And I really want to focus on that small tight knit community in that membership, but this membership, it really is more scalable if that makes sense. So to me, the $27 price point feels right. Um, And then eventually once I have a little bit more of a library of trainings and things like that, then I'm definitely going to increase the price this next launch to the $47 price point. Gotcha. All right, cool. Well, they're two very different options because we've got the the back-end membership. We've got the front-end membership. We've got one that's 30 bucks. We've got one that's 200 bucks. There's a third one, did you say as well, Michelle? What's the third? There's a, there's a, another option, is there? Yes. So this is this is um, a completely standalone membership. So there's it's not attached to anything. There's no upsell. There's no prerequisite. So with a back end membership, again, there's that prerequisite, meaning that they have to purchase the course in order to be invited to the membership. And then with the marketing junkie society. It is more of that front end offer, meaning that I have an upsell, an option for them to upgrade to a private client. Um, This one is more of a standalone and it is just completely 100% scalable. There's no community, there's no coaching, there's nothing like that. It's actually what is referred to as a publisher membership. Mm. So this one is also actually born out of necessity and born out of need. This is something that my indoor playground students and the people on my email list have been begging for, for months and months and months, actually probably years by now, but I finally was able to launch it this past month. So essentially it is called book more birthdays and it's for any party related business. So somebody that does balloon work, somebody that is a child entertainer, we have face painters, we have indoor playground owners, we have gymnastic centers, basically anybody who wants to spend less time and less money advertising their business all while booking more children's birthday parties. So something that I teach a lot on my podcast and on my YouTube channel is I'm 
a very big proponent of organic content marketing. I think YouTube, I think blogging, authority platforms, things that are searchable. So Google is obviously a search engine. YouTube is a search engine. I, I definitely teach heavily this organic content creation that isn't necessarily social media. Mm. I think a lot of indoor playground owners and gymnastic centers and brick and mortar businesses, they spend way too much time on social media and not mm. enough time on searchable content. Yeah, so essentially point. what I provide for these members, it's $27 a month. And I provide done for you blog content that they can kind of tweak and post mm. and get really long-term results from. And like I said, book more birthday parties, all while spending less time and money advertising. Love it. Yes. So, okay, cool. And yeah, I think for the listeners there, the, the, the value of that one is if you've got a very defined niche, right? That can work if yeah. you, let's say you've, you've got a membership site for, you know, real estate agents, you know, Hey, here's the exact content you can post, you know, or, or something like that. So I think that's awesome. All right, cool. So look, so much good info there, Michelle, if anything, I think the listeners are probably like, Man, I thought I knew what a membership site was. Now there's, you know, there's back end, there's front end, there's 30 bucks, there's 100 bucks. What do I do? Where do I start? Can we simplify that for the the listeners? Let's say they don't have a membership site, but they like the idea of it, you know, they're thinking of it. What are maybe some three simple steps they uh, they could take or or could could consider? Sure, absolutely. And for me, it always comes down to asking my audience. I, mm. while I don't necessarily find that surveys are the best way to get information from people, yeah. if I have somebody that is a very dedicated podcast listener or somebody who has purchased some of my products or workshops or things like that, I'm actually a big fan of getting on a Zoom meeting with them and yeah. saying, hey, I noticed you bought this. I noticed you were interested in this. Can you tell me a little bit more about what gaps you're facing? Is there any, any where in your business that you feel not supported, that you feel like you're constantly searching for and things like that. And that's exactly how all three of my memberships were actually born is mm -hmm. just asking people. And I know a lot of people are very big into surveys and things like that, but I find that information that I get from surveys is very superficial. And I yeah. really value talking to people, seeing their body language. Yeah. Hearing the words that they're using, you know, um, for example, I'll use the book more birthdays membership as an example, people understood the value of blogging. Like I was getting the concepts across to them, but they didn't have time. They didn't know how to put strategy behind it. They didn't know how to execute. They just needed somebody to kind of take that off of their plate for them. And again, exactly what you said, it's, it can be done in so many different niches. I have an ad client that does the exact same thing, but for travel agents. Mm. Um, and exactly what you said, there are people that do the same thing for real estate agents. But the reason that I decided on that type of membership was because my members, my students were all saying like, yes, I get it. I completely understand, but I don't have time and I don't have time to learn. I mm. need somebody to do it for me, but they couldn't necessarily hire somebody to walk, to write every single blog article from scratch. So I basically created a formula to create these templates so that not everybody's blog is going to read exactly the same because there's plenty of room for customization, but yep. essentially it's putting all of the strategy behind it, doing all the heavy lifting, basically getting them 85% of the way to the finish line. And they just have to kind of carry it over. And I felt like that was something that was a lot more realistic for them to do. But again, I wouldn't have ever known that that could be a potential membership site. And I never in a million years would have thought that I would be creating that type of membership. But it's because I really take the time and I value listening to the people inside of my memberships. And a lot of times I think people make mistakes by asking the wrong people. Mm -hmm. The people that I spend my time talking to and seeing what they need and things like that are people that I've qualified through actually using my products or people that have proven that they're my ideal customer, the type of people that I want to attract. So I guess that first step would be ask your audience. And again, kind of resist the urge to throw a Google form out there. Try mm. to actually get on the phone with a couple of really ideal people. Listen to the words that they're using, because not only is that going to help you decide what they need, you know, do they need community? Do they need one-on-one -on -one support? Do they need coaching? Do they need just materials in their inbox every single month? What is really going to be the one thing that gets them those results. So that first step would be asking your audience. And then the second thing I would just say to, again, decide on that style. So 
what I heard from my audience was, okay, I'm spending too much money on Facebook ads. I'm not seeing the results that I want. And as soon as I turn an ad off, the results kind of stop. And I'm sure it's a little bit surprising to a lot of people that somebody who teaches Facebook ads for a living would recommend content marketing over Facebook ads. But for some businesses, it just makes sense. And for these small local businesses that are serving a very small geographic area, it's so easy for them to find success with blogging. And they can then amplify that success with Facebook ads when the time comes. But I heard from them like, okay, I'm spending too much money, too much time advertising. I kind of had to take that feedback and dig a little bit deeper, like exactly what I was saying before. What is the one thing that's going to be able to get them results? I knew that was blogging, but I knew that their big objection was time. So the second thing I did was figure out, okay, I know their problem. I know their objections. I know why they're not getting success. How can I best help them? So that was number two, is I figured out what style membership would be best to get people the desired results that I wanted. And then number three, I am obsessed with their results and I'm constantly monitoring their progress. So I mentioned in the beginning of the episode that I really do not shy away from numbers. In fact, I live there. That's really, truly a quote that I like to live by in my day to day. When people cancel, I want to say, okay, did, how many blogs did they actually download? How many tutorials did they actually consume? Was this a time issue? Did they not have enough time? Did I not do a good enough job onboarding them? Was there a gap? Could I have sent them the login link maybe another time? Could I have followed up with them after they purchased? I am so obsessed with finding how my members are getting success, what's working for them, what's not working for them, and really figuring out how to retain members. I think a lot of people spend way too much time getting new members and selling and doing launches and things like that. But I really spend, I would say, 80% of my time actually with my members, serving them, making sure they're getting the best results that they can, and analyzing those retention numbers. Retention is much more important to me than constantly getting an influx of new members because I know that I can, I can always run Facebook ads, right? I can always get a new stream of customers. But if I get a hundred new customers as a result of a speaking engagement or something like that, if I don't have a setup to actually retain them, to get them results, that's a short-term benefit, right? I'm going to lose those members as soon as I gain them. So to any new membership site owner, I would get obsessed with your retention and serving your members and getting them results because that is the true foundation. And then once you have that in place, once you feel really comfortable, and once you have those stories of transformation, and once you have you know, a level of comfortability that you can actually get people results with your setup, then you can focus on getting new members. But too many people have that backwards and then they get a bunch of new members, they all cancel, and then they don't have a business anymore. They don't have a sustainable membership. So that's always the advice that I give to people. So just to recap, the number one is identifying the problems your audience has. Number two, finding the way to best address that issue and get them results. And then number three, actually monitor those results talk about them. I have my students on my YouTube channel and podcast all the time kind of talking about their results, what works, what doesn't work, and then focus on retention before you focus on getting too many new members too quickly. Yes. Wow. Such good tips. I think they're so good. I'll, I'll give a quick summary and then we'll we'll do a, a wrap. So yeah, I mean, let's even start with the membership in general. I think it's it's so good the down point, like I love causes as well, but it's like you start from zero every month. You know, it's like, yeah, I had a good month. And then the next month, you got to back it up. And then the month after that, you got to back it up. With memberships, providing your retention is good. It's like, okay, this amount of revenue I made this month, I'm going to make the exact same, if not more, next month. And then the month after that, the exact same, if not more. So it's just, it gives you such a good base. So I, I love that. Uh, I love how you said, ask the audience in Zoom. You know, I'm a huge fan of that. You send out a survey, you know, you get some okay responses, but actually I've seen my, my best story of that. So, and I recommend more than a couple. I can speak to 10, 20 people, right? Um, but I was having, I was going to launch a course on, you know, how to, how to build a successful Facebook group or how to start a successful Facebook group. And I was on a Zoom with someone and I was like, all right, right. Uh, you know, um, 
qualified them and whatnot. They were like, yep, that sounds good. I was like, great, you know, um, how much would you pay for a course like this? A no-brainer price, you know, like let's say you got an email next week and it was like, hey, here's this course, you know, well, you know, what price would you buy it for? He was like, look, I'd, you know, probably 500 bucks. I was like, okay, cool. Hey, you know, I've actually, if you want, I've got it ready here. Do you want to buy it 500 bucks? He's like, oh, no, no, I don't have the money. And I was like, okay. Um, so what would be like a no brainer then, you know, what would you actually pay if you got this email next week to do it? And he's like, uh, you know, maybe 300 bucks. I was like, all right, cool. Hey, I got it ready. Do you want it for 300 bucks? And he was like, no, 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 I don't have the money. And I was like, okay, so what would you personally pay for it? You know, if you got it next week and he was like, look, no brainer price. I do it for $97, right? Now, whether I sold it for 97 or whatever is a different story, right? But the, the message of the story then is like, if that person just sent out a survey, and he said 500 bucks and all my responses were 500 bucks. And then I tried to launch it for 500 bucks and didn't sell for 500 bucks. I would have been in some trouble, right? But if there's a Zoom and you can actually get into it, um, you just get a lot better info. So I think that's key there. I love how you said the best way to then help them because you know that problem there. So it's like, all right, let's come up with that solution. And the more specific, the better. And if it can, and at least, I think multiple things are okay as long as it starts with one. You know, sometimes you see a course or a membership and you're going to learn how to do this and this and, this, you know, like you're going to learn how to sell a course via YouTube and Udemy and Skillshare and Facebook ads and Instagram. And, oh man, that's too overwhelming, you know? I'm not even going to look at it. But if it was the one thing to my one problem, you know, it's going to be a lot better there. And yeah, the results. My, my favorite thing there is if someone does cancel, I want to find out exactly why. That's actually where I use surveys. So I find surveys are okay in that situation there. Um, but you know, if someone if someone cancels, I want to find out what they liked. I want to find out what, what they didn't like and why they canceled. And then I want to fix that because I figure there's only so many reasons why someone will cancel, right? And it's like, okay, if they canceled because of this, well, that's something I can fix. Let me go and fix that. So no one ever cancels for, for that reason again. So I, I love those tips there, Michelle. Uh, hey, I want to be sensitive of your time. So there's just a few questions I always like to finish up with. Uh, this being a, a podcast for course creators, I always ask the guests what their platform of choice is. So Michelle, you run courses, memberships. What's your platform of choice? I use Kajabi and okay. I have used quite a bit of platforms. Um, quite a few. I just find it the most intuitive. And for me, it's probably not going to surprise anyone because this is something that I talked about all episode, but I really found that Kajabi was best for my students. It was easiest mm -hmm. for them to navigate. Um, so that's my, my current platform of choice. I currently use active campaign for email, however, um, just because I, I don't like to put all my eggs in one basket. I used to work in IT in addition to marketing. So I know that systems fail. Um, so I kind of like to eliminate that risk um, by having everything in an all-in-one platform. Yes, agree. Awesome. All right, final question, Michelle. You're obviously a mentor for plenty of people out there that want to get better at their marketing, plenty of people out there that want to get better at their indoor playground. I'm curious to hear who your biggest mentors have been. And if you could answer this in a few different ways, if you could give us a paid mentor, so someone that you've paid cash to, uh, to do their course or their program, someone that you haven't paid money to, but you follow them on social, whether it's their YouTube channel or their Instagram or their Facebook group, uh, and a book that you recommend every course creator should read. So paid, unpaid, and book. Awesome. So, well, the second question is going to be a little bit difficult because one of the things that I freely spend money on is coaching and consulting and courses. <laughs> There's not a lot of people I follow that I haven't, you know, put my money where my mouth isn't paid. But my first paid mentor, the first course that I ever bought was actually a local business Facebook ads course. Mm. Um, it was from a woman named Courtney Foster Donahue. She's um, oh, down yes. in Georgia in, U in the US. And that was my first course ex experience. And I was just completely blown away by the value that she provided in that course. She broke it down so easily. I got such great results from it. I absolutely loved her paid community. And since then, I've bought pretty much every single thing that she's ever launched. Um, I think that she is one of the most brilliant marketers, very underrated. So if nobody, if anyone listening has not heard of her, I highly recommend all of her products and courses. I've done her search engine optimization course. I've done so many different um, programs of hers, her course creation, um, things like that. 
Um, and then somebody that I follow that I haven't paid. Or you can, um, or you can give us two paid if you prefer, if that's easier for you. Sure. Um, maybe, I'm also, maybe, the be- maybe give us the best. If you've said, hey, you know, Courtney was the first, who's the best person you've ever paid? Sure. So, um, you know, probably I'm a big fan of Sue McLaren. I've taken his tribe program. That's really where I took my memberships that I already had running and really elevated them to the next level. And that's really where I learned how to focus on retention. And that's really where it clicked for me, just how important retention is. And not only how important it is, but also how to measure it, how to actually increase retention. It's something that, you know, a lot of people listening are probably like, well, yeah, of course, if you get a member, you want to keep them as long as possible. But Stu McLaren and his tribe program is really where I learned the actual steps on how to retain a member, how to get people results, and not only how to get people results, but also how to get those stories of transformation for your sales page, for your social media, how to pull those stories out of members so that your marketing is kind of simple. And the membership sells itself if you can focus on that enough. So that's probably my favorite program on membership sites. It's one I always recommend to people. Well, it's, it's, it's the one I bought I off really, you. It's the one I bought yeah, off you, really, I think. Exactly, it is. And it's really where I learned the finer details of memberships. Um, I really think he's still the go-to when it comes to creating a highly profitable membership site. And I'm so thankful that I found it because... Like I said, I was kind of, I already had my marketing junkie membership, but it was tutorial based. And that's just not what was going to get people results. Again, they didn't want content. They wanted support and coaching, but had I not understood how to do those interviews and how to dig into those retention numbers and things like that, um, I would have never realized that. And I would have just kept pushing and pushing and spending more money on Facebook ads on an offer that was just not connecting with people. So I always recommend that program to anyone who is a new or an existing membership site owner, because as course creators, we kind of always understand that there's so much, uh, always, always new things to learn, always so much we can improve on. Yes, I agree. Um, and love that program myself. Book, Michelle, one book that, that a course creator should read to get better at marketing or selling or retention or membership sites. What, what would be one book? Okay, so I have two that are kind of tied. Um, for my brick and mortar businesses, I always recommend the book Clockwork by Mike Bacalowitz. Even for my online business, it is my absolute favorite business book. It really teaches you, again, the practical steps on how to create a business that runs more without you so that you're focusing solely on what you do best and what you enjoy the most. Something that I've dealt with a ton as an entrepreneur is burnout and mental health issues. And once I read that book, it really clicked for me that, you know, all the self-care in the world was just never going to help until I was actually able to free up some of my time and free up some of my energy. I was doing way too many tasks that I didn't need to be doing. So that is my favorite book for entrepreneurs kind of facing that burnout. But then my favorite book to recommend for membership site owners and course creators is actually Pat Flynn's Superfans. Mm. I don't know if you've read that book, but it basically takes the idea that if you can just get 10 or 20 people who are your diehard super fans that will sing your name from the rooftops, who will bring up your name when somebody asks you, you know, who's your favorite paid mentor or something like that. If you can just get a small group of people or, you know, a group of 25 members that I currently have in my my beta program, if you can just get a small group of people and just become obsessed with their results and get them to be that super fan level, you're never going to have to worry about marketing much because those 25 fans will turn into, you know, a hundred fans. And then those hundred fans will turn into 400 fans and it will just keep amplifying from there. So I absolutely love the tips and the strategies that Pat gives in that book. I've read it probably five or six times by now, and I can't recommend it to enough to anybody in the online course space. Love it. Yes. I, I haven't read Clockwork, but I've read um, Profit First. And that's one of my favorite books by the same author. Is that the same author? Same author. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I have to say, I, I also love Profit First. That one was a little bit drier. Um, I thought that Clockwork was much, uh, much more enjoyable read. Um, I thought that Profit First was great for, again, for very practical, um, mm. but Clockwork really completely shifted my entire mindset. But I, they kind of go hand in hand because a lot of businesses, if they're not making money or if they're not prioritizing profit, they're not able to take the steps that he recommends in Clockwork to delegate, to outsource. 
to you know hire a team. So I think Profit First and then Clockwork are a great hand in hand books. Um, but I absolutely cannot recommend Clockwork enough for anyone who wants to only do what they love in their business and really avoid that burnout that so many of us in the online space can face. Well, just added it to my Amazon cart then. Uh, and yes, super fans, Pat Flynn, I actually did a, an Instagram reel this morning and it was like, oh, hey, really? yeah. And it's like, Hey, here are the three books that I recommend every, um, every course creator should read if they want raving fans. It was uh, raving fans by Ken Blanchard. It was um, super fans by Pat Flynn. And have you read the membership economy at all, Michelle? By no, I Robbie haven't. Kellerman Baxter. That's a good read too. That speaks, it's not specifically about membership sites, but it's sort of like, hey, here's how membership works, whether it's a gym membership, whether it's an online membership, whether it's Netflix, you know, whether it's a church community, you know, so that's a, a good read as well. Um, but yeah, I'm a huge fan of, of Pat Flynn and that book. Um, Michelle, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover today. If it, There's going to be a heap of people listening to this that are like, all right, I want to sign up for at least one of those those memberships. Uh, is the best go to just your website? We can find everything there. Yep, right on my website. So whether you are looking for Facebook ad tips, whether you're looking for my podcast, whether you're looking for, you know, if you ever want to open an indoor playground or anything like that, it's all right on my website. I have tons of free Facebook ad downloads, free, um, free business guides, things like that to kind of uh, uh, elaborate on everything I've talked about here. Beautiful. Awesome. All right. Well, Michelle, that's pretty much all I wanted to get through today. Is there anything I should have asked you but forgot to, or anything you want to finish us off with? Oh, good question. I guess I would leave people again with making sure that before you think about any paid advertising, because a lot of what I talk about on podcasts is Facebook ads and things like that. And I would encourage every online course creator, every membership site owner to focus on the foundation of your business, which is your customers and their results. And only once you kind of get that down and feel really comfortable there and have that group of super fans, can you start amplifying that business with paid advertising? A lot of people will do it backwards and they will just create an offer and start pumping Facebook ad money into it. But again, you really have to go back to your why and that's hopefully getting people results and changing people's lives. So I would encourage people that as you're reading those books, as you're digging into your numbers and things like that, always bring it back to why you started this business, why you started creating your courses, focus on that. And then everything else will come a lot easier. Love it. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time, Michelle. All right. Thank you so much.